Should I go no contact with my borderline or my narcissist? Some of you may be asking yourself this question, whether you have been discarded or whether you have discarded the borderline and the narcissist. And the answer here is quite simple, is that you should absolutely go no contact with them. It's not only a good idea, it's absolutely necessary uh, because the moment that borderlines and narcissists have access to you, how small that might be, it might also just be texts, not even meeting, but the moment they have access to you, they will start manipulating you. And it's as simple as that. So preventing that from happening is really critical and what no contact can help you achieve. So if you stay in contact, even if it's irregular, you know, it's not that frequent, it's once in a while, you are basically opening yourself up to manipulation tactics from their end. And what you need to realize is that the borderline and the narcissist doesn't really care about you. And if they're staying in contact with you or if they're trying to open up channels of communication with you, they're not doing it for your interest. They're not doing it to, you know, I don't know. It's not because they have empathy for you or this or that. They're doing it because they're putting their self needs before they're, they have a need of self-preservation. So, so they might be reaching out or they might try to break no contact because they want, for instance, an ego boost. They want to feel that they're wanted by someone. That could be a reason that, for instance, a narcissist or a borderline tries to reach out. It could be because they want to get back together with you because you were their favorite person and they're trying to reach out and they're trying to appeal to your empathy in order to string you back into some kind of relationship. It might, there's hundreds of reasons that they might be doing, uh, trying to break no contact. And uh, the, the truth is that all of these reasons are egoistic and are selfish. There's nothing uh, empathetic about it. So it's very important that you, you realize that being no contact is one of the ways that you prevent yourself from being manipulated. No contact is also a very clear boundary. It's probably the only way that you can heal and move on from a relationship with a borderline and a narcissist. And borderlines and narcissists really struggle to understand boundaries, but no contact is a pretty clear boundary, but it's a very difficult boundary to enforce as well. You need to be really strict with yourself about enforcing it, meaning that you have to block them everywhere. And you know, this means actually blocking them on social media, blocking their telephone number, blocking them on email as well, which is actually impossible, <laughs> but you can at least move it to the spam. Um, so, and what you can expect is that the borderline and the narcissist are going to try to circumvent this. They, they, they're going to try every possible tactic to get back in touch if that's what they're aiming to do. So they might reach out from random numbers. They might ask, for instance, family members to reach out. Uh, so, so, so you really need to be prepared for what's coming for you. And uh, even if you think, okay, now after you decided to go no contact, you finally decided and you're like, okay, I'm gonna block them everywhere. You take the decision to block them everywhere. You block their social media, their emails, and you're like, oh, finally I can close this chapter. I can move on with my life. Well, they will reach out <laughs> and you need to be prepared for them to reach out. You might have someone randomly following you on uh, social media. There might be a, a unknown user uh, following you there. There might be someone texting you on the messenger and Facebook or whatever, and you don't know who they are and they will do that. So you need to be prepared for this to happen and it doesn't need to come as a surprise and it doesn't need to stop your healing process. And it's not just them, as I mentioned, breaking no contact, but they might also try to pursue other avenues. That means, for instance, asking one of their siblings to reach out to you, uh, or it might be one of their parents, you know, their mother, their father, um, or even their friends. And it's important that you, it, it's harder to say no or to block a friend, or it's harder to block a sibling because you don't have anything personal against their sibling or against their parents or whatever else, you know, but you have to still be very disciplined and you have to decide whether to block these other people that are kind of conveying messages on your partner's behalf, or at very least politely say, look, 
I'm not interested or whatever else, you know, but just be politely uh, uh, saying no. And then if they continue, then you should block them as well, I think, because then they're just being a vehicle of manipulation on behalf of your ex or of your partner. So it's okay to have some degree of anger towards their friends, towards their family, if they're, if they're being used this way. No contact is also very important because if you've been long enough in a relationship with a narcissist and a borderline, then it means that you're very likely codependent. It means that you have created this deep trauma bond, you know, this addiction to this person. And, and, and that means that you really need space in order to start breaking up these codependent patterns. That's the only way you can do it. You cannot do it. You cannot achieve breaking the codependency if you are together, if you are close to each other, you know, or if you're staying in contact, even if it's not very frequent contact. So you need to go for full uh, no, no contact. And of course, that can be more difficult if you have children or if there's different kinds of situations. So you should do whatever you can to minimize the encounters and the uh, time together. Uh, so if you live together, you know, try to move out, you know, that should really be your focus is, you know, renting a place, moving out, whatever it is, you know, so do whatever you can. But then, of course, there are some circumstances where you cannot fully, fully 100% detach, for instance, if you have children or whatever else. And then it's just important that you try to minimize the contact and you keep it as cold as factual, only focusing on uh, these, these elements, you know, picking up the kids or, or whatever else, you know, and you only focus on that. There's no texting in between. There's nothing else, you know, so you try to do no contact as best as you can. If you enjoy the channel, by the way, please uh, leave a like and subscribe. It, it really, really helps. Um, another important aspect here of no contact is that staying in contact opens up for conflict and it really hinders your emotional healing. You need space. You need space from this toxic uh, relationship. You need to have time to sit, to learn, to reflect. And if you stay in, con in contact, then these conflicts, these discussions, these arguments, you know how a relationship with a borderline and a narcissist is. You know how, how much fighting there is, you know? And if you stay in contact, these things will continue. There's going to be tensions, there's going to be anxiety. Many actually say that after they've been in no contact with a narcissist and a borderline for a period of time, and then the narcissist and the borderline reaches out, they have this very instinctual fight or flight response to the narcissist or the borderline reaching out. And that's really a, uh, it's kind of your body telling you, okay, this is a toxic relationship. You need to get out. Danger is approaching. It's a bit like the, the zebra in the savannah when, the, when they see the lion, it's kind of the same, you know, and, uh, and that's really your body, your DNA telling you, you know, you need to get out of this uh, uh, situation and your body is tensing up. So, so, you know, avoiding conflict by maintaining no contact is also very important. Um, so if you've decided to go no contact, it might be difficult to resist the temptation to maintain no contact. So I might do a more lengthy video about that, a separate one, but how do you resist the temptation to break no contact? For instance, if it's a holiday and you're thinking back about, you know, last year we were on holiday together and I really miss uh, this experience or, you know, you pass in front of a part of the city and you think about a time that you were together. So what do you do in those instances where you miss them and you maybe want to reach out? Well, what I suggest is having a note in your phone, which has all of the bad things that have happened in your relationship with the borderline or the narcissist. And every time you have this feeling coming up, you just go back and you reread the examples of manipulation or whatever else uh, that push you to decide to leave or to try to keep no contact in the relationship. And that will really help you because when you start feeling that you miss them and so on, you just look at the list, you bring yourself back in those horrible moments and hopefully you'll be able to say, okay, actually, I don't want to be with them and I should maintain no contact. But it's also normal to realize that the no contact journey is a bit up and down. There's going to be moments where it's very easy. There's going to be moments where it's very difficult. The most important thing is that you do not fail, that you continue to keep no contact. And the more you do it, the more you keep no contact, the easier and easier it will be. Uh, it's exactly like someone detoxing from uh, an addiction. You know, the beginning is going to be difficult over time. The more you do it, the easier it will be. So you need to have that in mind. 
So to sum up, no contact is not only useful, it is essential. Uh, it's not a tool to re-attract your ex or anything like that. It should be a tool for you to heal.